Once you've taken the witness stand and been placed under oath, you'll be subject to questioning by attorneys in the case. The questioning is referred to as examination. Examination consists of direct examination and cross-examination. Direct examination is most often conducted by the attorney who has called you to testify unless that attorney is hostile to your case, in which case the examination will be cross-examination. For example, if your attorney calls you as a witness, then your attorney will conduct direct examination. On the other hand, if the opposing attorney calls you as a witness, then the opposing attorney will conduct cross-examination. The primary difference between direct and cross-examination is that under direct examination, the questioner is prohibited from asking leading questions. Leading questions are allowed on cross-examination. A leading question is a question that suggests the answer and is often answerable with a yes or no, although all yes-no questions are not considered leading. Let's look at an example of a leading question. Isn't it true that you intentionally removed all of the monies from your joint checking account without consulting your husband? Yes. Generally, leading questions should be answered yes, no, or I don't know. Any attempt to explain your answer will likely be met with an objection from the examining attorney. Isn't it true that you intentionally removed all of the monies from your joint checking account without consulting your husband? Yes, my husband had threatened to remove the money as well, and I thought I'd best remove it before. Objection, non-responsive after yes. Sustained. As presented earlier on direct examination, the examining attorney is generally prohibited from asking leading questions. Let's look at the same question in a form that is not leading. Have you taken any action with regard to the joint bank accounts? Yes. What action have you taken? I've transferred the funds into a different account. As you can see, the question on direct examination was not leading. The witness was required to provide the answer to the question as opposed to the answer being included in the question itself. During your testimony, there may be objections by the opposing attorney and sometimes even your own attorney. When a lawyer objects, he or she will stand up. If you see a lawyer stand up, please cease testifying. Failure to do so may result in an admonishment by the judge. What did your child tell you that happened at school that day? Uh, he said that his... Uh, Objection calls for hearsay. Uh, he said that his mother... Your Honor, please instruct the witness not to continue testifying when a lawyer stands up. Sir, when an attorney stands to make an objection, you need to stop where you are, do not answer further, wait for instructions or for another question. Do you understand? Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Make sure and be quiet when a lawyer stands up. When a lawyer objects, the judge will rule on the objection, although sometimes the lawyers may argue with each other and the judge may ask questions in between the objection and the ruling. Ultimately, the judge will either sustain or overrule the objection. When a judge sustains the objection, this means that you cannot proceed with answering the question. When a judge overrules the objection, this means you can proceed with answering the question. Testifying can be scary. When lawyers are objecting and arguing around you, it's easy to get confused and fearful. Sheer nerves may cause you to forget whether you can answer or remain silent or to even forget the question altogether. If this happens, take a breath and ask the judge whether you may answer the question or tell the judge you don't remember the question or don't understand the question. Objection calls for speculation. Your Honor, that question does not call for speculation. She knows the answer to that question. No, Your Honor. The counsel is asking the witness to guess. All right, all right. Be quiet. Objection overruled. May I answer the question? Yes, you may answer the question. Asking is preferable to testifying when you're not supposed to or sitting silent when you're supposed to be testifying. Likewise, stating that you don't understand a question is preferable to attempting to answer a question when you're uncertain what the question is. During the examination of a witness, after a specific question, the lawyer that did not ask the question may ask if he or she may interrupt the question and take the witness on vor dire prior to the witness giving the answer. 
In this context, the lawyer is asking that he or she be able to question the witness to determine if the witness is legally able to answer the question. For example, the lawyer may want to determine if the witness is qualified to answer the question, or if the proper legal predicate has been met to allow the witness to answer the question, or if the question is disallowed by evidentiary law. Sound complicated? It is. We're not here to try to explain the technicalities of courtroom examination techniques, but rather we want you to have a basic understanding of what is going on if this occurs. Let's look at an example. What was your intention when you executed this contract? Your Honor, may I take the witness on voir dire? Yes, Counsel, you may proceed. Are you alleging that any portion of this contract is vague or ambiguous? Uh, no, I think the contract is clear in what it says. Your Honor, I would object to him testifying as to his intention when he executed the contract. Such testimony would violate the Four Corners Doctrine. Sustained. The testimony will not be allowed. In that scene, the attorney wanted to disallow the witness's testimony, but had to prove certain facts first. He did so by taking the witness on what is referred to as voir dire, and then lodging his objection. Legal predicates and Latin phrases are not your concern, but understanding at least the basics of what is happening while you're on the witness stand will hopefully make the experience of testifying less stressful.